hello everybody uh, so yeah I guess we are on time so I will start so thank you for joining uh, I'm Jan Kara from SUSE Labs I'm working for the performance team and today I'll be speaking about the stochastic bisection so uh, Uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> there was this sound disturbing. Uh, okay, so stochastic bisection. So first, uh, I will go through some of the details what actually general bisection is, and then uh, we will go more to the stochastic bisection. This was actually my Hick week project uh, in the one Hick week before. Uh, and then last week I also somewhat improved it. So basically what the bisection is, everybody probably knows it with Git. So essentially if you have some code changes and for simplicity we can assume for start the simple situation where you have some commit A which then gets like updated to commit B and then modified further to commit C and D and E and F, so linear history like this. And you know that at A something was good and at F something is bad, so so like something broke, for example. And you want to find which of the changes actually broke the uh, broke the test, for example, or broke the code. And so you can obviously do this by testing every revision, but that's slow. And there is a way how to do it faster in roughly logarithmic number of steps by halving the interval of the commits. So for example you can start by testing commit c uh, and then if you uh, like this one and then for example if it is good then you go you know that the problem is somewhere either in d or e or f and so so then you go and test e as the next one and if it is say bad then you have then it is either the problematic commit is either D or E. And so you test D, and if it is bad, you know that, for example, D is the first bad commit. If it is e, uh, if it is good, then you know that E was the first bad commit. So this is how the bisection works, uh, at least for this simple linear history. Now, this is not always so easy, as you can see in the graph below, because basically history of git commits can be like arbitrarily directed as a click graph, essentially, because of branching and subsequent merges. So like it's not always obvious which commit is like halfway between the good and bad. Like if we have here a good situation and the bad situation, it's not always obvious uh, what is actually something which is in the middle. And there is even not necessarily such commit which is exactly in the middle, uh, as is the case here, for example. But the trick here is to, real, uh, is to realize that basically always in any directic, directed acyclic graph, you have commits that are reachable from your commit. So if we decide to test this test commit, then we have these orange commits which are reachable from the test commit and the dark blue commits are those that are not reachable from this test commit and essentially regardless of the test result uh, you will know that you can either stay in the orange set of nodes or you can you, you or the problematic commit so is in the dark blue set of nodes yeah so if the test is result if the test result is bad that means that basically one of the orange nodes is bad. And so you have to continue searching within the orange nodes. On the other hand, if the test result is good, you know some of the dark blue nodes must be introducing the fault. So you are going to search which of them it is. Uh, so this algorithm is, is implemented basically by git bisect. And as you can see, in this case, you do not always have the number of nodes you are in, you are dealing with, but you know you can usually get rid of sizable portion of those. So still, 
in total you are you are asymptotically using logarithmic number of steps but that's also because it's not clear actually how the history exactly looks looks like that's the reason why also git cannot exactly estimate the number of steps it will take to do the bisection it can only give you rough estimate uh, okay so now bisection is relatively easy when we and like at least well established when when the test result is reliable like when when basically we run a test and we know that the result is good or bad but it's, it's not always the case sometimes the situation is more complex like uh, for example where you are hunting some race so uh, then you don't know after some time if the race is rare enough then after some time you don't know whether you were just unlucky in reproducing the race or whether this commit is in fact a good one yeah. similar situation somewhat similar situation also happens when uh, like you are doing for example performance testing uh, and the test actually or the benchmark has a noticeable variability so then if you have the test result you know that you know likely this result is good but it may be that you are also unlucky and due to variability the result was actually bad and you know just due to variability you've got better numbers uh, so uh, in these cases actually bisection is pretty problematic because simply one faulty step one bad decision during the bisection process basically sends the bisection in the wrong direction and it is never able to restore yeah so basically the consequence is that the bisection ends on unrelated commit completely and this is like we have practical experience with this uh, in the performance team where lots of the bisections we do actually end up on random code points completely unrelated obviously completely unrelated to the regression being reported uh, and so like the question is how we can do better or whether we can do better and the answer to this is that yes if we count with the fact that the tests are not quite reliable we can obviously do we can do better so this is what i've implemented and it's an extension to the git bisect so essentially the, the, there are just some additional options to git bisect uh, where you basically when you are starting bisection you specify to the command like confidence you want to reach so basically because you now when you enter the field of probability you can never be sure of anything yeah so <laughs> so all we can guarantee is that let's say with 99 percent probability this commit is the one you are looking for which is introducing the code failure or whatever but you can never achieve 100 percent confidence uh, so, so you have to specify the confidence uh, with which you uh, you want to reach when identifying the commit obviously the higher confidence you want to have the more commits uh, the more tests it is going to take to achieve this confidence and then also with each bisection result so when you do the test uh, you will specify the confidence you have in this result now uh, this is sometimes problematic and i will discuss this later but that's the let's say mathematical abstraction i have taken taken to solve this so then basically if you are given the tests done so done so far and the corresponding confidences the algorithm computes for each node in the commit history the probability that you know this node is the faulty one given the tests performed so far so if you know something about probability this is yeah, so-called conditioned probability uh, and yeah you can compute probabilities like this uh, and basically once you reach once some commit reaches high enough confidence that this is the faulty commit you will terminate the bisection algorithm and report it uh, if no commit has reached high enough confidence yet we will basically uh, 
select a point that concentrates this probability the most yeah and basically the principle is the same basically the, the, the commits are kind of split on the reachable ones and unreachable ones instead of just counting the number of nodes you now have to do weighted counting based on the estimated probabilities for each node i don't want to go into the details it's somewhat covered in the paper in the proceedings if you are interested or feel free to contact me if you are really interested about the details but i figured it wouldn't be really that interested uh, people wouldn't be really that interested in the mathematical details here and the programming ones the algorithm is a bit involved but it's not that hard but requires some ba like basics from probability and stuff like this uh, so yeah, this is the algorithm we have, and uh, it works nicely. There is, uh, there are some downsides to it, though. So, you know, or the upsides of this algorithm and this method I have chosen are that if you specify confidence with each bisection result, then this is really flexible. So like for example the one-sided error case i have mentioned like with the rare to reproduce race uh you know this can be covered by this model because basically when you have seen a failure you can rip you can tell the algorithm with 100 percent confidence i'm sure this is a bad commit yeah this is when the race really reproduces and you know you, you have faulty you have already faulty code uh, if the problem does not reproduce you know you know let's say with 80 percent probability i think you know this commit is good because the race didn't reproduce the question is where you take this 80 percent from yeah and that's that's why this model is somewhat problematic because you don't always know what the probability actually is you pro sometimes you have some rough estimate but not always uh, and i don't have a good solution for this so if people have ideas uh, i will be happy to uh, i will be happy to actually uh, like discuss them uh, or you know if people have other ideas how, how what would be beneficial how to do this how to do this stochastic like bisection in these uh, conditions where the test results are not quite reliable then then i would be happy to actually brainstorm and that's why i act why i actually started this session like to also solicit some input and if people are interested or how they think the like let's say api would be more useful for the problems they hit with stochastic bisection so actually so yeah uh on the other uh, for uh, like this model also works for the use case i've mentioned about the performance testing because if you do performance testing you have the result which is more on the bad side or more on the good side so you can tell bad, bad, bad or good but also by the distance fr from actually the tipping point and by the variability of the benchmark results you you get in this particular test you can say how much confident you are that actually this is a good or bad commit yeah so sometimes if the result is somewhere close to the tipping point you can say okay i'm not really sure this is maybe 55 percent good and basically the bisection algorithm will take this into consideration with appropriate probabilities that yeah it will slightly modify the probabilities but not really much uh like in some experiments i did uh i wrote actually like a simulator <laughs> doing the bisection and randomly flipping random number generator to like decide about the test results and stuff like this so, so based on the experiments uh like if i have 10 step bisection then stochastic bisection uh and yeah and i have like 80 percent probability i have 80 percent confidence in my test results then stochastic bisection actually saves about 40 percent of the tests compared to like naive implementation where you basically repeat the test on each bisection point enough times to reach like high enough confidence to 
uh, to like have the bisection without error. Yeah. So in this particular uh, case, if you have like 80% probability of like after running test once, so if you run the test 15 times and then basically decide based on the majority of results, whether the result is good or bad, then like with 15 repetitions, you, you get high enough reliability at each test point that you will reach with 95% probability the really correct commit. That's the experimental result. If I actually did like theoretical estimates, it has the theoretical estimates actually lead to something like 30 to 40 tests, like based on some churn of inequalities. But yeah, in practice, it seems to be that 15 tests would be actually enough. And stochastic bisection can be better than that. It can like, it is enough to do about like six, uh, only about two thirds of these, or for uh, I, for forty percent less tests to actually get to the result with the same reliability. So uh, that's about it. What I have prepared. So if uh, people have any questions and ideas or like problems they meet with bisection, I'm happy to give uh, the answers. Uh, also, if people have some ideas about the confidence problem, like how they think we could estimate initial the confidence or if the algorithm should somehow estimate the confidence, like there is obvious solution, like there are, I'm not the only one who has spotted this problem. I'm the first one to actually implement it in Git, but there are people aware of this problem. There is some project on GitHub actually, which implements stochastic bisection using some Bayesian statistics. Uh, but the problem with Bayesian statistics is it's a really complex one. And so, so the project actually handles only completely linear history. It's not able to handle branches and merges and it's not thus it is not integrated with Git in any way. So uh, yeah, you have to do the manual work of actually selecting the bisection or somehow transferring the bisection points from Git history to this program. So it's not really very convenient to use. Uh, and the basic idea is like in this algorithm is also that you don't have to specify the confidence on each bisection point. The algorithm estimates it's on its own in this program, but yeah, it does it basically by repeating the test on the same commit until it decides it knows what the confidence actually is. <laughs> so yeah, it's not very clever. But on the other hand, there is a question whether there is some better solution. Like intuitively, there should be something better, but I haven't been able to quite nail down some more reliable solution. Come on, I know some of you guys must have questions. Maybe you're just surprised that uh, Jan, <laughs> Jan has done this quickly. So, so maybe I missed it, but do you use it in the automation? Right. So we don't use it yet. Yeah, I I wanted to first submit it upstream before we start using it in our automation. But yes, in principle, we could start using it. So so uh, also there is actually I'm aware of still one bug in my algorithm, like when I run it through the simulator, when like preparing the paper for the conference, I actually for a fact know that Although my esti confidence estimate are that like 
in 95% of cases we should land on the right commit. The stochastic bisection actually lands there only in about 90% of cases. So there is a bug somewhere in the math, <laughs> which I still have to catch uh, and fix. Uh, like for some, like some of the arguments I have made probably are not quite correct. But anyway, yeah, after I fix this, then probably, uh, and the results of the stochastic bisection algorithm really match the simulator, then uh, yeah, I guess we can push it. Uh, we can also experimentally try to use it in our performance automation. Like I have submitted also the patches upstream and there was to like Git upstream, there was no major objection basically what was missing were some like tests in the git test suite to exercise exercise the new code properly i've partially implemented that during last tech week i still want to add a few more like tests on a more complex let's say on a more complex trees uh, to stress somewhat unusual like or more complex setups of the Git bisection, but yes, in principle, upstream is open to this addition and sees it that sees it as useful. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Dario. But, yeah, but uh, if I'm not wrong, because it's the part of uh, Marvin that I know less, uh, there is a component that does uh, bisection, right? Imper hour. Is it yes. also based on uh, some, of course, implemented uh, in a different place, I guess, because it's in Marvin and not in Git. But does it also do some kind of uh, similar algorithm? So, so actually, Impera, uh, but Mel is here, so he will be able to tell you with more confidence. But as far as I know, Impera under the hood actually uses Git bisect. So, Impera. The biggest magic of Impera is actually how to, based on the benchmark result, decide whether the result is good or bad. Yeah. So based on the benchmark, based on the variability, and you know what between what you are bisecting, it will decide whether the result is actually good or bad. And that's most of the magic inside Impera. The rest is just git bisect. Oh well, yeah, sure. Uh, no, I know it uses git bisect. Uh, I was curious whether uh, the decision of whether uh, um, a result is good, or, uh, is good or bad uh, f f it follows, um, I don't know, similar principles to what you're doing, but... So, yeah. no, as far as I know, uh, Impera is relatively simple. Like, it has a couple of methods how to decide, like, because, for example, also the benchmarks have multiple metrics. Yeah, so you select the metric you want to bisect on, and then uh, in Impera, uh, like it will decide whether the tipping po about the tipping point, whether the, the the tipping point is in the middle. I like, yeah, I'm not sure if there is more to it than basically setting a tipping point somewhere, but I guess Mel can answer this. Okay, and uh, one. Thing uh, which I also don't have the details about, but uh, there is uh, um, uh, basically when I used to work more on Xen, Xen has a, used to have, but I'm sure it still has a CI, it's called OSS test. Uh, they do not do uh, any performance testing, so it's all functional testing, so it's simpler. But I am quite sure that they have, uh, because it used to be a colleague of mine, the, the, the person who implemented it, a uh, Bayesian, I think, uh, bisection uh, capability implemented, uh, even in that case, in the, in the CI suite, not at the Git level. But uh, yeah, I really, know only that it exists. I don't know the whole, but if you if you're interested, I can I can, I can uh, fish the links uh, or the, the pointers and uh, and point you to it. It's probably going to be something I guess uh, more similar to Impera than uh, to what you are doing, but may maybe there are uh, uh, interesting uh, aspects. I, I I don't know. I mean, yeah. So I know for a fact that. 
For example, uh, like zero day robot, which is used for upstream kernel testing, does some performance tests and they also do bisection. Uh, but yeah, they, they also do bisection in like pretty, <laughs> like, like let's say they put power to it, yeah? because what, what they do is they use just git bisect on, on the benchmarking results, probably in a similar way how Impera does it. So basically it just takes a midway between good and bad result as a tipping point and then based on this decide whether the particle test result is good or bad and simply they run the bisection 10 times and if it all the 10 bisections land on the same results they will report it and otherwise they just ignore it and decide that the, that the like regression didn't happen or is not bisectable so so that's that's how for example upstream zero day currently does the bisection of performance regressions which is obviously somewhat suboptimal and you know lots of the bisection basically are not reported because some of the bisections end somewhere in the weeds yeah uh on we in like performance team uh, in marvin we actually report every bisection but as a result it often lands on the wrong point because of some error somewhere or because actually the original the original problem was not a, a real performance regression it was just a testing artifact yeah, due to natural variability yeah Yuri? about about uh, estimating the confidence in the bisection results mm -hmm. i was wondering well the user can provide an an initial estimate i guess that could be refined because in the process of uh, running tests uh, you're actually sampling so if there were assumptions you could take just to um, estimate the confidence not actually to do the bisection you could assume that if you got a bad result all those commits behind this one could be bad so if you got false negatives for those this would effectively decrease your confidence in the bisection result and vice versa and and since you you'd be sampling and sampling you would be uh, iteratively improving this guess and this confidence that's my intuitive yeah. Oh, yeah that that's a good idea yeah i i also had some idea like this and yeah as you stated i agree this this sounds useful i will try to think about it whether i can formulate it in some mathematical way in which can be then transformed in the program <laughs> but yeah yeah i understand the intuition i understand the intuition that if we have a bad result and it can be reached from some results that were marked as good then we know that you know some of the results must be bad so based on this we can we can somehow this has some influence on the confidence or we get some estimate on the result confidence based on this like there is also the problem whether like we think that the confidence of the test is the same at each test point yeah this is not always the case uh, although often it is the case yeah because like it there can be some intermediate point which makes the race for example more or less likely yeah. so that that even like complicates the matters further yeah so yeah. the question obviously if we make the assumptions the confidence is always the same then we can like reduce as effectively we can reduce the number of steps in the end because we can get like more we have yes, more information there's, there's that effect and you would have to use i guess these use these assumptions only to compute the confidence not really to do anything else with that confidence yeah anyway thanks for the idea i i will put more thought into this whether whether i can use this 